Advanced Team Associate Engineer here, Bob Stelflew. Um, traditionally an on-road guy, yep. but you know, leading one of perhaps uh, Associated's most important off-road racing projects in a long time. Um, how, well, first of all, how much of, of an honor was it to design the B4's uh, uh, successor? Well, I'll tell you, Aaron, this, in this case, this is probably one of the biggest undertakings I had to do. I mean, we had the most successful platform over the biggest amount of time. I mean, we had five world championships, five consecutive world championships with a B4. So it was quite a bit of stress, at least to make sure that we weren't going to lose any of that. And that was one of the biggest, you know, biggest factors in the design is making sure that what we had was going to stay in there. So, and it was a, it was a great honor, I'll tell you, for them to put that, uh, that trust into me to do it was, was, was awesome. So I think we've got a great package now with all the things everybody was looking for. I'm really excited to see it go forward. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that everyone's talking about is that the B5 is between the rear motor and mid-motor platforms. It's two separate cars. Uh, how quickly in the design process did you decide that was the way to go? Not nearly quick enough. Um, of course, it's what everybody wanted. That's the trend of the market right now is to have a, a universal platform for both of them. And, it, of course, it was my task to figure out whether or not that was feasible. So I went through and, and actually made a convertible car. Um, and this took many months, you know, to, to put in all the features that we wanted for the new vehicle and have the convertible. In the course of which we decided that, that wasn't the way to go. We were going to lose too much from the B4 buggy to make it convertible. And this was both in stiffness of the chassis and durability with suspension arms, the whole assembly. So it was, it was a big uh, task to, to show that we should make two different cars and keep it that way. And there are quite a bit of differences between the two. Um, you know, the, the arms, like you said, are different. Uh, obviously, the chassis are different. Uh, but that kind of gave you a little bit more freedom to design each car to work specifically with that design. That's right. As a matter of fact, it, it gave me the most freedom I needed because with this being two different platforms and no compromises between the two of them, we were certain that we weren't going to leave, leave anything behind from the B4. So if you take a look at the way the B5 assembles, uh, how the parts go together, it's not much different from the B4. We didn't lose much of that. And that way we knew we were going to keep that platform good and we were only going to go forward with it. In the meantime, we could do what we needed to for the mid-motor version then to make sure that it was going to be stiff enough. So you see the difference in the aluminum chassis versus plastic. A plastic chassis on a rear motor car will suffice because the motor is in a position that leaves us enough room to put ribbing on the back end of that plastic chassis. In the mid-motor car with that motor moved forward in front of the axle, we don't have the room for ribbing, so it necessitated this aluminum chassis. But it didn't necessitate it on the rear motor. We could keep costs down, we could keep the better chassis on that end. So it really allowed us the freedom we needed. Now, one of the other changes that everyone has seen, um, you know, in the press photos originally released of the cars, is that the mid-motor car was shown with a gullwing front arm uh, versus the straight arm on the, the rear motor car. But one of the first things you told me when we got here today was, that's not uh, platform specific, that's a tuning option. Yep. It is a tuning option, and for us, we had two cars and two different sets of arms, so we pictured one on each rather than one of each arm on each car. So we put the straight arm on the B5 rear motor because it should be most like the B4, which had a straight arm, but you may use each in each condition. So we have a gull wing arm. It changes the rate at which the shock is compressed, and it'll feel a little different on the track. It feels more like a falling rate, so you'll end up getting uh, a softer suspension with a gull wing arm through the middle of the corner. So on tracks or in car conditions where we need more steering, then we use a going arm. You know, when the track uh, and the grip level is high, we'll probably use a straight arm. So for us, we just pictured one on each car just to make sure that people knew we had that tuning option and they're cross compatible, that's for sure. And we were talking to Cody as well. Uh, you know, the transmission's pretty closely related to what it was in the original car, at least for the rear motor. Uh, but the way that it's built, um, actually the way that you explained it, I thought was really cool. Yeah, it is. It does assemble a little bit different. Again, we didn't want to leave anything on the table from what we had before. So the transmission is what it used to be. We have a great ball diff in it using the same components, the good steel balls and, and the, the, uh, the drive rings and drive plates, everything we need. Uh, but the way that the transmission case assembles is different. Uh, rather than the motor plate clamping everything together, the motor plate is hung from one side. So disassembling the case is a lot easier to get into the diff. Things don't fall apart. Um, but again, the methods are sort of the same. So it just it eases the maintenance a little bit. And uh, we talked about the front arms being different on the car, although they are universal. Uh, but the rear arms are also different from the mid-motor to the rear motor car. And in the end, this is probably one of the bigger constraints with having a universal platform. What we try to do on each one of these cars in order to make the cars work good around the track is to keep the motor as close to the rear axle as possible. So in the rear motor configuration, we move that motor farther forward. And what that means is that the suspension arm then has to have a sweep to clear that motor. 
Okay, now when we use that same suspension arm on the mid-motor version, the sweep is the wrong way. So the arm needs to be designed different to accommodate so that we can keep that motor close to the axle in both configurations. So it's, it's, it was a necessity to do that, you know, and again, it allows us the freedom to make the two platforms what they should be. And uh, we saw a lot of changes to the B4 over its, you know, 10 year run, almost 11 years. Uh, one of the last being, you know, of course, the big bore shocks and the new VTS slipper clutch. And I'm sure that the evolution of that platform gave you guys a lot of, uh, a lot of information to, to design something new. Yeah, it did. Uh, and even into that end, of course, the big bore shocks and the VTS3 is going on the car in the kit form, but even the shocks aren't quite the same. We've done a little bit more work in the shock and the bottom end to make sure that the shock shaft is smoother and shinier than it used to be. This gives us a, a much better feel of the shock, less friction, less stiction, so much better movement around the track. And on top of that, the O-ring that we use down on the bottom is different than it used to be. It looks about the same, but it's different, and this allows for freer shock movement. So, and all of this was stuff that was developed and tested through the B4 platform, like you said, over the last, you know, several years. So, um, and even in the beginning stages of the B5, the B4 was essentially the test platform. We would use that, cut up, and dice together to, to, to prove the concepts that we were going for. So, And uh, one word that both you and Cody have used a lot um, is refinement to the original platform. And you see that in a lot of the little changes to the car. Um, new ball cups, new uh, battery brace, uh, hold down the thumb screws. Um, just a lot of little things on there that you don't really see at first, but they really add up to just a, an overall nicer package. Yeah, definitely. And this, again, comes from the fact that we've been running that B4 buggy for so long, 10 years plus, like you said. We knew where we could fix things, what we could make better, what, what could, you know, what, what are the possibilities are, without, again, throwing the, uh, the performance out the window. So the ball cups were always a, a sore spot, you know. So we refined them with a more durable ball cup that still is a low-friction material. Uh, it has an open end on it so we can get in and adjust the ball studs for heights for roll centers you know everywhere through the cars this the same way the amount of fasteners that are used in the car or where they go there are less fasteners that go through the bottom now so the screws aren't dragging on the track or filling up with dirt you know um, just the adjustments that we have everywhere. I mean, we have the ability to adjust the kick up in the front end now between 25 and 30 degrees. We have good trailing axle adjustments, things that we never had before. You know, um, uh, many adjustments in the back end for roll centers for the hub and where the link mounts. Um, and it, it's really a, a well-refined package, like you said, yeah. And um, another thing that kind of caused a little bit of a buzz when you first announced the car is that uh, something we haven't seen in a long time, the, the buggy was originally released as what you would call a team level kit, um, which it hasn't been done in a long time. Uh, before that, it was the basic kit without all the factory team hop-ups, um, but you've also mentioned that there will be a lot of hop-ups for the car available. Why was that uh, decision important to the, just the overall package of the vehicle? Well, there are a lot of, a lot of factors that played into that. Um, you know, uh, first and foremost is cost. Uh, a price point is a very important thing to hit with today's economy, okay? Um, and, and the second is that really we didn't want to lose the team, uh, the team kit as we did. That happened just through the course of our kits and the generations that, that went through. Now we have a different series of, of RTRs here, the qualifier line, that's more geared to these ready-to-run cars. So it allows us to single out the factory team a little bit better. So we can have a distinguishing mark between a team kit and a factory team where we didn't have that before between the ready to run the team. So the things that we're missing on it with the team are very few. I mean, it's uh, titanium turnbuckles and clamping wheel hexes in the back. We still have the threaded shocks, aluminum hard anodized threaded shocks, and a lot of the key features uh, that are, are necessary are in there. So this team level kit was a bit for the price point. Uh, of course, removing some of these uh, titanium and aluminum parts that cost money, you know, uh, is worthwhile. And it allows us to kind of feel this, this platform out to see what we need. It's a different car, so whether or not we need to run an aluminum part here or a hard plastic part there, we don't know yet. So we're going to run some with the car before we before we realize what will need to happen with the factory team, you know, if it even happens. You know, and another point, of course, is that the, the a lot of the other cars on the market aren't available in factory team format. So uh, price point and, and, and just sort of getting all these new parts out are the key factors, you know. Uh, team Associated has a, a very deep history in racing, um, obviously, and then this new car, of course, is... Uh, we'll be great at you know at the club racing level as well, but you know obviously there was a lot that went into it. Um, you know Cody is a world's finalist. Uh, you are a very accomplished on-road racer, um, but also you have a, a 
very large staff of you know very very talented off-road team drivers as well so how important was that input uh, into the design of the car and how many people you know were driving the car throughout its development I'll tell you what the input was invaluable I mean especially in my position where I, I come from the on-road side and I didn't know the full history behind what was happening here what we had coming in for input from the team guys, you know, all of our teammates, or from Brent Telke, the team manager, or from people that I talked to at the hobby shops, anywhere, was invaluable. Uh, and that information basically sets the goals and constraints for what we can do or what we want to do with this project. So it was necessary, you know, and then we move forward. Um, there's a stint in time, of course, then when those, those people or the team drivers or, or the other people are disjoined uh, and they don't get to be involved with the project. Uh, after a period, then they get brought back in. So once we had all of our constraints down, once we had all of our designs set, and we knew what we had was a good product, then we bring in the hero drivers, drivers like Ryan Cavallari, Cody Newmandall, and uh, you know Brent, and, and, and uh, Mayfield, and all the guys. So each one of those guys also had a hand in it. But again, to, to, to be clear, it's at the end of the project that they get to come in, because we need to be certain that what we have is good, what we're handing to them. So we had to get through a a big, pretty big learning curve, you know, to make sure we were there. But invaluable, invaluable uh, information from all those guys. And, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit of time yet before the kit is available to the public. Um, but how excited are, for, are you uh, for just, you know, the average club guy to finally get a hold of this thing? Jeez. I've just been watching the buzz online here over the last couple of weeks, and it's, I'm as excited as they are. I mean, this is, this is the turning point for me in, in my career here that... Um, it's been a lot of hard work here, so I can't wait to get these things out to the public to, to where, you know, my involvement isn't as much. So I'm as excited as they are, and I think it's going to be a pretty cool thing. Everybody's been waiting for this, I think, especially with the mid-motor craze. A lot of the folks have been forced to go over to other manufacturers' cars where the price point isn't there, you know, the parts availability isn't there, and they want Associated to do something. And we've been working hard at it and trying to just you know, bide our time to make sure we're going to make the right decisions, and I think we've got that now with the no compromise independent platforms and these guys it won't be long here you know a month or so and we'll, we'll be seeing these guys out in the hands of the public and it's gonna be a great day well it's gonna be a great day for me to go drive this thing I can't wait thank you for coming down here thank you for the interview and uh, congratulations man thanks Aaron thanks thank you